Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tammy and today I am bringing you Third Thursday Thrift Flips. Elizabeth from Rustic Chicks Design and I host this every third Thursday of the month and this month our co-host is Lolly from Lolly D's Creations. So let's get started. Hi guys. Okay, I got several projects this weekend. It is Memorial Day weekend and um, I've gone to uh, garage sale this morning. I have went to my booth this morning. I have went to urgent care this morning. Um, and now I'm finally back out under my tent. Um, this is going to be my spray paint and tent and it's got like screens all the way around it, like six sections of screens. So it's really cool. Um, anyway, I have some wood projects out here under the tent and um, we are going to get started. I'm going to clean this table. Uh, it should just be ready to go. Um, nothing wrong with this table. I did not want to paint it. I think that it's gorgeous as is. And so we're just gonna clean it. So let's get started. Did put some 80 grit sandpaper on my sander here. Um, and this is called sand net. My husband got these, a whole pack of them and I used it on something and it worked amazing. So much easier than the other sandpaper that we've been using. So I don't know where he got these, but the brand name is Diablo. So if I can find them online, I'll link them down below. I am just using my crud cutter and I'm wiping this down really well. And then I do go back over it with a clean, um, wet towel and wipe the crud cutter back. It turns out gorgeous. And then I go over it with some furniture wax just to kind of shine it up a little bit. And I also put some furniture wax inside the drawers to freshen them up and give them a fresh scent. This beauty was gorgeous. Nothing wrong with it. All right, it's super hot out here, so I'm not gonna show myself on camera and I'm all dirty. So um, I have this next piece. It is missing a knob which is okay, I have different knobs. Um, this is actually an Ethan Allen piece. This is the bottom to a curio cabinet and I have the top in another spot. So we are going to start cleaning this and get this ready for sanding and remove all the hardware and work on this piece next because this is gonna go in my booth to hold some of my smalls. So let's get busy. I am just showing you that I'm using my crud cutter here on the base of the china cabinet. This is actually, I don't know if you can see this, this is actually an Ethan Allen piece, um, made of birch wood, I believe it's made in the USA, and really well put together, dovetails, all of that. So whenever I find furniture that's solid wood and together and a good name brand, I always try to purchase it if I can. I'll show you. It's got some pretty good grooves in here. Scratches. Lots of sanding we're gonna have to do. And now I am just using my drill and removing the hardware from these drawers. I was trying to do this on my own and record, so <laughs> it was a balancing act, I'm gonna tell you that. But this cabinet, oh my gosh, this china cabinet turns out so beautiful, you will not believe the transformation. So you gotta stay tuned to the end, and oh my goodness. Plus you're not gonna believe what I found inside of one of the drawer cavities. I'm also going to show you a few projects that I picked up that morning at the garage sale that I stopped at. I hit the jackpot there and I am thrilled with what I found and at only $15 a piece. Now I only paid $40 for this china hutch. I'm glad I looked inside of here before I went to clean it out. I may have found a diamond earring. Look at that. Let's hope it's a diamond earring. <laughs> now it's time to sand and I have to wear these gloves. They're, I think, weightlifting gloves um, to keep my wrists 
straight and it helps support my hands because after I use my power tools, my hands are just sore, they ache, and they really hurt. So I am not pressing down hard on this sander. I am letting the sander do the work. So I am literally just holding it in place on the top of this china hutch, and then I am just guiding it along and letting the sander do the work. Okay, pop the sander down. I need to clean it, and then we're gonna go and go in with some um, 220. No, no, 180. We're gonna go in with some 180 to knock down the grain a little bit. We got the top all cleared up. Okay, look at this beautiful chippy goodness. I just went over it with some crud cutter, got it cleaned up. I lightly sanded it to get all the loose stuff off and now I'm just gonna clear coat it and leave it as is. There was a crack down the seat, so we wood glued it and clamped it. So we're gonna leave that overnight and let that set up and then it will be good as new. I bought this today at a garage sale for 15 bucks and I have a white one over there waiting to get cleaned up as well. So I sprayed this with crud cutter and red paint is coming through. I don't know what that is. If that's lead or rust or what, but it is staining the white pink. So if any of y'all know what's going on with this paint, comment down below and let me know because I have no idea. Okay, this stool was freaking me out. Like every time I would try to clean it, with a crud cutter, it was like the paint was bleeding and it was just bright red. It was so creepy. I didn't even know what to do with this stool. <laughs> I mean, I'm keeping it, but it's out in the garage for right now because I don't even know what to do. Truly weird. I've never had this happen before. So let me know if you've ever seen anything like this or what it might be. Yeah. That is creepy. Creepy. Okay, my husband is taking the air compressor to the top of this china hutch and we're getting it all blown off. I will go back with a microfiber cloth and wipe it all down real good. Um, but the air compressor does a really nice job of getting off all the sawdust from the sanding. Now the top, I sanded down to the bare wood. The sides, I sanded down just as much as I could because I knew I was going to be painting the sides. So I wasn't too worried about getting that to the raw wood. But I am going to be staining the top and painting the rest of it. This absolutely turns out gorgeous, this top. Oh my goodness. Now, do you remember all the scuffs and scratches and grooves that were in the top of this? I got it extremely smooth. And these are the shelves. Everything is gorgeous. I cannot wait to put the stain on the top of this china hutch. I just can't stop touching it because I'm so proud of the job I did on the sanding. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I am going to be using this General's Finish American Oak Gel Stain. I love this gel stain. I have all but thrown out all my Minwax. <laughs> I haven't thrown it out. I'm keeping it, but honestly, I am not using it anymore. I love this gel stain. I just, I don't even know why I would ever go back to regular liquid stain. This turns out so gorgeous and you wipe it on, wipe it off. You can layer this stain. You can make it as dark or as light as you want. So my husband is the one that went to the ER today, and now he thinks he's the ringmaster of the shit show. Well, he might not, I don't think he's the ringmaster, but he may be a performer.
So I just put on one coat of this American Oak General's Finish gel stain. And because I want it to be just light, I'm going for a light, bright, and airy look. Um, and I think it turns out gorgeous. One coat is all it needs. And he's just supervising, pointing out, hey, you missed a spot. <laughs> See, I was so excited. I'm like, look how beautiful that is. Oh, do you see his hand? Okay. So now I'm going in with Fusion's Cashmere, and I'm going to be using Fusion Paint on this China Hutch. This is the top of the China Hutch. Now, I had already spray painted the top. I did not sand it because I knew it was going to go in my booth. However, I didn't realize that I was going to be selling it later on. So I just went ahead and went with it. I did spray paint it. That should do a good job of sealing it so that there's no bleed through. And I actually did not have any bleed through on this cabinet. So that's good. Sometimes you will have some bleed through if you don't sand it or even if you do sand it. Um, from the finish underneath if you don't sand it down to the raw wood. So I was just doing the inside of this china hutch in the cashmere and I am using those squirt bottles that I have my paint in. I get off Amazon. They are linked down below in my Amazon store and this zebra brush. Oh my goodness guys if you have not used one of these zebra brushes I actually offer them in my booth now. Um, they are triangle, and I believe this is the one and a half inch size. And if you are not using this to cut in when you're painting your house or furniture or whatever, it is perfect to get in those corners and to cut in. It, it gives you a perfect straight line. I am not kidding you. My sister was like, no, I'm not using that brush, but we redid my father's living room lately. And that will be a video coming up later on um, because there's more to do at his house. And um, she's like, I tried to get her to use it the first time. And she was like, no, I'm not using that brush. And then I'm like, here, you need to try it. Like, it's perfect for cutting in. And she used it. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I got to get me some of these brushes. So she went on my Amazon store and bought two of them for herself. She's like, I have to have those brushes because she's always painting something. She's repainting her living room. She's repainting her grandson's room. She's repainting her. She's always painting something. She redoes her house more than. I don't know. More than anybody I know. She's repainting a room every other weekend. All right. So I'm just continuing to paint this cashmere. It is getting dark outside, but I am getting two coats on this cabinet because it is going to the booth the next day and I needed to get it done. With all the interruptions I had that day, I was bound and determined to get this done because this was my plan for this weekend was to get some furniture flipped because I have a separate booth from my sister now and we have two booths at this time and oh, anyway, I got to get some stuff in there so I can sell it. All right, so now I am using the Fusion French Eggshell. And oh my gosh, this is a gorgeous color. And I love my fusion paint. If you guys have not used fusion paint, you are missing out. So I am in the works of figuring out a website to where I can offer fusion paint to my viewers. Um, so hopefully I will get that up and running by the end of the year. I just have not even had time to set up a website. <laughs> I have been traveling for work and, you know, life is just busy and it's about to get busier because the holiday season is just around the corner. I mean, the other day somebody said Christmas was only 14 weeks away and I was like, what? I, I couldn't believe it, but I don't even know how many weeks away it is now. So 
it's getting closer and closer and I am not prepared. How about you guys? Have you started? Have you started shopping for Christmas already? Anyway, I slowed that down so you could see how great of a straight line it gives you when you use the the tapered edge. And then I just continue to paint the side of this cabinet in the French eggshell and the outside is going to be French eggshell and the inside is fusion cashmere. Now, I'm going to need your opinion on this. I did not distress the cabinet and I was on the fence about it. I almost distressed it, but I didn't. So, should I go back and distress it or should I leave it just painted as is? So, once you see the finished product, let me know down below in the comments, should I distress or should I not distress? That is the question. <laughs> so, I'm really interested in your opinion. I give this cabinet two coats. So now I'm just painting the French eggshell on the outside of the top of the china hutch. And remember, this is an Ethan Allen. Oh my goodness. I was so thrilled to find this. I actually found this cabinet at the antique mall where I have my booth. And um, the lady was selling her booth items at 50% off. It was $80, so I paid $40 for it, and my sister's like, oh my God, no way. It's not worth $40, and I'm like, but it's so gorgeous. Like, I could redo this because it was so incredibly scratched all over. I mean, it was a mess. I, I didn't even show you the worst parts, but it was a mess, and I, I'm so glad that I bought it because <laughs> it just turns out so gorgeous. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And don't forget to go over and visit the playlist. It is Third Thursday Thrift Flips and Lolly D's Creations is our co-host this month. As well as Elizabeth and I host this every single month on the third Thursday. Okay, here we are the next day. I had a few mishaps here. But other than that, it looks beautiful. I'm just going to do a little bit of touching up. And I, don't, I haven't decided if I'm going to distress it or not. I think I probably won't. I'm just going to leave it as is. And it turned out beautiful. My Ethan Allen China Hutch. And then we're going to put some finishing touches on it. Work on the hardware and get this baby ready for the booth. Okay, so now I'm just touching up where I got cashmere on the French eggshell and I am touching up around the edges, just tightening it up a little bit, making sure that there's a nice crisp edge. And I don't really use painter's tape. I just use the right paintbrush for the right job. Okay, so I have some of this quick wood. It dries super quick and we're going to fill these two holes because I only have three knobs and I'm going to put them on the outer drawers. I think that makes more sense. And then we'll just leave these blank. So all you do for this is pull it out. You pinch some off, wrap it back up really good. See how it's two colors, light and dark. So you wanna knead it together until it's all one color. And then you don't have too long to work with it because it sets up really quickly. Then you can sand it and paint it and you're good to go. You don't have to wait for the wood filler to fill in and or get hard and all of that stuff.
Okay, so it's about all the same color. Now I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna put it down in there. I'm just gonna continue to fill these holes with that quick wood. Now, it will be ready to sand in about 30 minutes, but you wanna make sure that you get enough in there to fill the holes completely. You wanna put some on the outside and the inside, and you wanna make sure that when you sand it back, you sand it back very, very smooth. You do not wanna see where the holes were on the outside of the drawers. Now. When they open up the drawers, yes, they're going to see that there were four holes instead of two. But that's okay because we only had two knobs. Well, we had three knobs, and I wasn't going to put three knobs on there. So it's either two or four. So since I only had two, we only did two. Now it's very important to make sure that when you sand the outside of the drawer, you also sand the inside of the drawer to get the quick wood really smooth. Now we're going to work on the shelving. So I got these little triangles from Timu and they work amazing. I really like them. Um, and I am using this color blocker from Fusion. Now this is really old bottle. It's old labeling and everything. I actually just found that this weekend in my town where I live. I guess there was a store in town that used to carry Fusion, didn't know that, um, because for the last probably five years, I've been buying it from Wichita. So if they were carrying Fusion, um, they didn't advertise it very well. I, and I even looked on the website. So you can look on the website and see who carries Fusion in your area, and they do have protected areas. So, um, Nobody can sell fusion in town, uh, in the town that I live now that I am a fusion retailer. So I am just showing you, I'm going to use the fusion cashmere on these shelves. And by the way, this color blocker worked really well. Um, it acted as a primer and there was absolutely no bleed through. So I thought, you know what, they're getting rid of their stock. So I bought that. I think it was three or four dollars. So I'd rather use that than my other primer and um, use it up because it's cheap. <laughs> so I'm going to use that up and I'm going to save my other primer um, until I use up this color blocker. So there's that. And then I just go over this with uh, the Fusion Cashmere. Now I really don't need to give this two coats, but I go ahead and give it two coats because I want that durability of the paint. And remember, Fusion Paint is an all-in-one paint. It is a primer and a top coat all-in-one. Okay, now we are on to the hardware. So I bought this little crock pot, especially for hardware. It sits in my craft room, and this is actually my paint sink. So please don't judge me on how dirty my paint sink is. I'm always rinsing out my paint brushes and cleaning hardware and whatever else in the sink. So I don't clean it that often. <laughs> so I'm just showing you that um, this is what I am going to be striving for is to brush all that tarnish off. And I did soak them in vinegar and water and I just turned it on and let them soak for a few hours and in the hot water and there you go. I brushed them with a brush. It came right off and now I am going to spray paint them with this fusion black matte black spray paint. Okay, this is how my drawer turned out. You cannot see where the holes were at all. It looks beautiful. And I'm ready to put the hardware on. But first, we're going to put this 
Hills of Tuscany furniture wax inside the drawers so they smell good. Now, there's no smell in this dresser whatsoever, but I just like to add this little extra something something because um, when you open the drawer, it makes it smell good. So let's put that on. So I am going to be using this plaid bristle brush. It's a lot stiffer so that I can really like work it into the wood. Okay. You just dip your brush in like that and put it in the drawers. Not only does it make your drawer smell good, but it also seals the wood inside the drawers. And I think it's just a nice touch. Now I am going to add these little felt pads. I got them at Dollar Tree. And these are great for all kinds of things, whether you're making signs for walls or whatever. But I am using the long felt pads to put on the sides and on the back part. That way it doesn't scratch the top of the china hutch. This also has like little brackets on the back where you can attach it, um, which we do attach it once we get once we get it in place at the booth. But I think it's just a nice little added touch. You want to make sure that you go the extra mile and make everything like those details. You want to add those details. Now, don't forget, guys, to go over and visit the playlist. I will have the playlist link as, as well as Elizabeth's channel, Rustic Chicks Designs, and Lolly's channel, Lolly D's Creations, listed down below in my description box and pinned in my comments. I know there's going to be lots of fall thrift flip goodness, so you're not going to want to miss any of that. And I also want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for watching today. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Now it is time for the final reveal. Now, this is just a reminder of what it looked like before. I don't know if you guys could see the potential here or not, but I'm just like, I got to have this china hutch because it's like small. I mean, this would be perfect for an apartment. My sister thought I was crazy but I just love how it turned out. And don't forget to let me know if you would distress this. This is how it turned out. What do you guys think? Oh my goodness. Is it not just gorgeous? I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Now I didn't have it staged in the first few pictures, but now here I have it staged and I am just in love. I almost didn't want to sell it, but you know how I am about stuff that I redo. I want to keep everything, but I can't keep everything. I just don't have the space. <laughs> anyway, I think it turned out gorgeous. Look at the top, especially with that stain. Is that not gorgeous? I absolutely love it. The shelves turned out great. The back looks like shiplap. I mean, it. this Ethan Allen China Hutch is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. So just let me know down below if you would distress it or not, because I'm still on the fence about it. I am thinking I twice I was going to take my sandpaper and distress it at the booth, but I didn't. And I'm just thinking maybe I need to. I don't know. There's my paint display. And there's another old dresser that is actually not for sale. I paid $30 for that, but I will be redoing it coming up. Don't forget to go visit the playlist, guys, and I want to thank you so, so much for stopping by, and I hope you have a fabulous weekend. I will see you in the next one.